This Ag Business Update brought to you by American Implement, indebted to the past, committed to the future. In a moment, Brandy Miller from the Kansas Cooperative Council. Would you like to see something done about high gas prices and low unemployment? Western Place Energy in Campus, Kansas is doing something about it. They're a proud part of Growth Energy, America's ethanol supporters, and they employ 38 people and will be adding more following the expansion. Ethanol fuel not only reduces the cost of regular gasoline, it's good for the environment and keeps money right here in the United States while supporting local rural jobs. Western Plains Energy, doing something for the future. SNS Trailer Sales with two locations in Ness City, Kansas is where everybody goes to buy or rent trailers. They feature the all-new, all-aluminum Mauer Grain Trailer with all of the electric options, the easy-to-load detached trailers, and a huge stock of header trailers. At the West location, you'll find bumper poles, goosenecks, and oil field specialty trailers, along with flat and utility beds for pickups. SNS Trailer Sales in Ness City and on the web, but remember, you do have to spell out the and. Well, October brings us Cooperative Month, and especially here in Kansas is what we want to talk about today. We're pleased to be joined by Brandy Miller, who is the President and CEO of the Kansas Cooperative Council. Hi, Brandy. Hi, Ken. How are you doing? So great to see you. Well, it is always great to catch up with you, and especially of a month of celebration. Now, of course, cooperatives are all over the state and all different, and we're going to talk about maybe something you didn't think was a cooperative is and also the impact that it has on the economy and and just the general well-being of Kansas. So, um, you know, I think, again, as we talk cooperatives, first thing we think is great elevators and, and agricultural, but that's a big part. But what there are a lot of uh, different companies that actually are cooperatives. You're absolutely correct. So we do work with a lot of grain marketing and ag supply cooperatives. But in addition, you can also find credit unions and farm credit. And a lot of the electric is supplied by rural electric cooperatives as well in the state of Kansas. And what some folks don't know is that you can actually find housing cooperatives as well in Kansas and a few other types of businesses that are structured as cooperatives as well. And uh, one of those uh, that is also really involved in helping form not only your group, but we've got folks at K-State. And uh, K-State has been one of those that has helped a lot of cooperatives get uh, get formed and to kind of help them. Yeah, absolutely. We have an amazing partnership with K-State. Actually, there is the Arthur Capper Cooperative Center located at Kansas State University. And Dr. Brian Brigham, he is is the faculty member that oversees that program and he actually sits as an advisory member on the council's board and so great relationship there we do a lot of training with them and a lot of education across the state in the value of cooperative structured businesses and the value that they provide not just locally in the rural communities where they typically serve but also just the larger impact to the state as a whole i can remember a few years ago they said well What's going to be the future of cooperatives? Because uh, some businesses, especially agribusiness, got bigger and bigger. And that, well, uh, is the need going to be there for cooperatives? But Brady, I think your members have shown uh, really in the last decade, 15 years, that they've kind of redoubled their efforts and really are bringing value back to those members. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're still seeing changes across the state in the structures of the businesses, especially in the ag space. But I think that's reflective of what's happening in production agriculture. I mean, we're seeing a lot larger farmers. And so in order to support those farmers, we need larger businesses to do that. Um, I think cooperatives provide a huge value across the state of Kansas and across the U.S., honestly, and it allows producers to have a collaborative, cooperative voice when they are thinking about production and marketing and just coming together and providing a service collectively. Brandy Miller is the president and CEO of the Kansas Cooperative Council. October is Cooperative Month here in the state. We're going to take a break, come back, and uh, talk a little more about uh, the impact that uh, co-ops are having in the state of Kansas. We'll do that in just a moment. 
Wolfter Construction and Irrigation has been around a long time, and a lot of folks have trusted them to design, build, and service all sizes of commercial and on-farm storage for grain and equipment. Wolfter is also known for their outstanding irrigation division where they stock a complete selection of nozzles, regulators, drops, gear drives, electrical, and structure components. Looking for an electric motor? Wolfter has a large selection in single and three phase. Next time, reach out to the pros who have decades of experience at taking care of business the right way. Wolfter Construction and Irrigation. When you've had a best friend for over 50 years, you develop a trust. And the Scott Co-op has been a trusted rural friend since 1957. A co-op keeps money in the area, doing business for and with their members. And that helps keep their hometown thriving with keeping money in the community. Scott Co-op is not just an elevator. It's the rural way of doing business. So when you see an elevator, remember your friends at Scott Co-op. And our guest is Brandy Miller, who is the president and CEO of the Kansas Cooperative Council. October is Cooperative Month in Kansas. And uh, before we maybe get a big, broad picture of cooperatives around the U.S., let's talk about one that I am learning more and more about, and that is uh, cotton production and how some of those cooperatives are really adding a lot, especially to southern Kansas. Yeah, absolutely. It's been exciting to see the growth of cotton in the state of Kansas. Kansas actually used to be a pretty big producer of cotton and then kind of switched gears and focused more on some of what we see more traditionally and think about as far as Kansas is concerned. But they've started ginning down in the southern part of the state and we're expecting big things. Um, the cotton industry has had some challenges this last year with weather, but the southern part of Kansas really is carrying the load. And we have some fantastic cooperatives located down in the southern part of Kansas that are really leading the charge. They, I found out Monday, they just started ginning. So. Wow. Well, I tell you, it's one of those things that, you know, you may have, like I grew up on the farm, farmed, uh, the cotton industry is completely different from this old Kansas, kind of this old Kansas weedy. I have learned quite a bit of how of how cotton and the role it can play in the economy here in the state. You know, we don't think much about it, but there are several acres. And so that's another crop that is very critical to to good weather conditions. So, uh, Brandy, let's let's maybe get the broad picture of uh, cooperatives around the country. You know, Kansas is one of 50 states. But uh, again, as we look at the broader picture, a lot of folks are mobile, get around and, and uh, maybe see different companies, different things. Uh, you got any numbers of where we are kind of nationally with the cooperatives? Yeah, absolutely. So since we're talking about cotton, I can focus a little bit on the ag space first. There's around 1,600 ag cooperatives and they actually generate about $300 billion in revenue for America's farmers. And there's around 10,000 business locations of agricultural cooperatives. But if we look at large picture of all the cooperatively structured businesses in the United States, there's actually more than 30,000 cooperatives. And that includes food, grocery, ag, as we've talked about, retail, purchasing, work cooperatives, utility, and financial cooperatives. Um, they count for more than 2 million jobs across the United States. And even in Kansas, that number is pretty significant considering. And they generate collectively more than $700 billion in annual revenue. Um, the cooperative model has been around for a long time, actually pre-United States formation and came over from Europe. And so it's Got a long, strong history, not just in the United States, but actually in the world. How easy is it to form a cooperative in Kansas or somewhere else? Does it just take two? No, it's it's actually not easy. <laughs> Uh, there's there's a little bit of work that has to go in, and it really depends on the type of cooperative structure that you're looking into. Uh, producer cooperatives have different requirements than maybe a retail or a um, maybe a home cooperative, for example, or a living cooperative. And so it just really depends on the type of business structure that you're looking at. Certainly, any cooperative, any type of business can operate cooperatively. That's there's no nothing restricting that behavior, but from an actual using the cooperative in your name, there are some legal requirements that are in statute, actually. All right, Brady. Now, if folks want to learn more about the impact that cooperatives have in Kansas, how can they do that? Yeah, please check us out on our website, or which is kansasco-op.coop. Or just visit your local cooperative. They're always looking for great people to 
be patrons, maybe check and see if you're a member of a cooperative. Sometimes people don't realize that they actually are, especially I've noticed more in the financial space when I tell folks that, oh, did you know that your credit union is actually a cooperative? Oh, I had no idea. I actually had that conversation last week. So you may be a member and you not, don't even know it. So I encourage you just to get involved and engaged and understand what makes cooperative business structures different from non-cooperative business structures. Okay, Brandy, thanks so much for joining us. And we celebrate with everyone in October being Cooperative Month in Kansas. So sure appreciate it. Thanks so much, Ken. It's great to see you. Randy Miller, who is the president and CEO of the Kansas Cooperative Council, has joined us. We will have more coming up in just a moment. cost of everything has gone up dramatically over the last 75 years. With one exception, keeping electricity affordable. Wheatland Electric, delivering energy for life, your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. KBUF Radio has agriculture information for you, 6 to 11 every weekday morning, starting off with agriculture today. Then it's the KBUF Morning Show as we talk with newsmakers, give you updates on markets, talk a lot about the markets, also agriculture information, and a little entertainment, too, along the way, like American Countryside from Andrew McRae. You can follow along online, westernkansasnews.com or other social media channels. You can also listen to any Western Kansas broadcast station online, westernkansasnews.com. I'm Ken Rogers. Thanks for watching.